Hello, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here on loverugbyleague.com on Facebook page. I'm James Gordon, I'm joined as ever by Drew Derbyshire. Um, we probably will be here for the full hour today, Drew, because there'll be a, there's plenty to talk about following a dramatic week in Rugby League. When is it ever thus? Um, please do leave your comments, as always. If you've got anything you want to add to the conversation or you want to ask us a question or you want us to debate anything, do leave it in the comments. As always, we are sponsored by Betfred. Thanks very much to Betfred for their ongoing support. Um, we can't really start anywhere else. Uh, we will talk about the World Cup and a few other things as well, but we can't start anywhere other than Toronto. Drew pulling out of Super League, um, Monday afternoon it was that it was announced um, not going to play at all in 2020 Super League going to run with 11 teams what's your thoughts on that? I, I can't quite see how, how it can happen uh, to be honest James I don't, I don't know where do you go from here because from a Super League standpoint all the other competing clubs in Super League are bound to be unhappy with the decision, uh, how does it work going forward uh, regarding the, the league table? Uh, because obviously teams have already played Toronto, some teams that haven't played Toronto at all. Um, it, so it, does, that, obviously that leaves the table skew with. It's, um, a, it's a bit easier that they've lost every game. I mean, it'd have been a lot different had Toronto maybe won mm. two or three. I, I would imagine, and we did have a piece on the site that I did the other day, um, I would imagine that their results will just get expunged from this season so effectively the games that they've already played will be as if they've not yeah. happened so obviously I think I did, you know I mean the six teams they played will have two points taken away and the goal difference the points difference taken well, away I I think that's, but it would have been a lot different had they say one two or one three but I don't I, don't, I, don't, I feel sorry for the players and staff uh, more than anything at this time because why why have they been recruiting as well for the 2021 season when they know well well well, they've been great for 2020, to be well, fair, because I mean, Callum Watkins has come in, signed for them, and then before he's even played a the game, they've said that, so they're not playing the rest of the season. Exactly. So, but, but they must have had some, they, they must have a, little, a, a little inkling when they were signing Watkins that they might not carry on the, the Super League season. So yeah. why, start, why continue and go ahead and sign him? And then why are you, are you speaking to the likes of obviously Ben Flower, Stevie Ward, Richie Myler, I think, 2021? I think this is one of the things that sort of not sat right with me is that people have been blaming COVID and the pandemic and stuff like that and you know it goes without saying you know without doubt Toronto have been massively impacted by that you know no home games obviously no TV money anyway um, you know they don't have the furlough scheme mm -hmm. in Canada whatever but at the same time all those things were, ch were true last week two weeks ago three weeks ago four weeks ago so how, if that was what was the issue here why not say that a month ago and stop all this I mean if they'd have said a month ago or six weeks ago look lads we don't think we're going to be able to come back this year um, and we've drawn that way I think it would have been a lot less damaging and, mm. and a lot less sort of dramatic for Super League had they done it that way rather than waiting until what you know two weeks before we were due to start they could have said this before the fixture announcement mm. and then Super League could have said right look because of the unprecedented situation you know, Toronto can't play for the rest of the year, but we'll be back in 2021. Whereas the way it's handled now, it's been a massive, cast a massive shadow over the over not just this season, but Super League as a whole. So where would you go with it as well? But what would happen now in in your view? Would you have a Championship team come up into Super League for the rest of the season? No, be... no. I mean, I I, I think I think Fenston's statement was embarrassing. I think you know I I, I can understand clubs say, you know, how can you have another team put their hand up and play for the rest of the season when the season's already started? You just can't do that. Um, I think I think I would probably say I would like to see a cha if Toronto were to go, I think it would make sense to invite a championship team to play next season in Super League but then at the same time, it's how do you come to that How do you come to well, that this decision? Is, this is what's been said, David Argyle, the Toronto owner, has said that he's not walking away from the sport and the game, he's not walking away from Toronto Wolfpack, they want to continue in Super League in 2021, would you allow them to continue in 2021? If, if Toronto, I think for me there's only two options, either they carry on in Super League or they don't carry yeah. on at all, because I, th I don't think it's fair on the Championship teams to have Toronto forced upon them, because don't forget, 
The championship, the championship season, we'll talk about this in a minute, the championship season is being written off this season. So effectively, all those championship clubs, 2020, meant nothing. And then they've already had Toronto the last two seasons absolutely steamroll that league. They've got the biggest budget, you know, they spend more money than anybody else. They won, you know, I think they won every game by a one did the last season. The season before they should have gone up but didn't because of the Super 8s, mm. um, you know, the Super 8s nonsense. So it's like you're then effectively saying to Championship Club, right, you're having Toronto back next year, so you've pretty much got no chance of winning the league again. Now you could you could make the argument that maybe they would have two up. Mm. Could they, you know if Super League was to run with eleven teams next season and Toronto went in the championship, could you say that there would be two promotion places, you know, and then still have someone relegated from Super League, so you'd have one down, two up to get it back to the twelve. But then it raises all sorts of other questions with Super League, like you know yeah, you couldn't have Magic Weekend if you have an odd number of teams. I don't think it looks particularly good for a sports league to have an odd number of teams where you've got. A team having a weekend off. Yep. Although having said that, it could, you know, they could maybe manufacture it in a way that it suits player welfare and all that. I, you know, I don't. I, I think for me, it's either they stay in Super League or, or they're not at all. I agree with you on in the sense that there's got. I think there's got to be an even number of teams mm. uh, in the competition. I don't think there can be eleven. It's like it's like you have around 10, 12, or fourteen. Yeah. Um, but I think. Toronto should be allowed to to stay in Super League for next season because I, I, I don't think it'd be unfair. But no, I think I think it'd be completely unfair on the Championship teams. Yeah. Uh, it'd be it'd be apt to join the Championship next year because that means the likes of Leeds, like Toulouse, London, who are, who are aiming for these Super League spots, will have to compete with with the big spenders in Toronto once again. I mean, the other thing, I suppose, the other thing that. If, if Toronto do go and, and go into, how do you choose the other team to go up? It's very difficult. So I, and that's why I don't see Super League running with 11, because I just don't see if they booted Toronto out. They're, they're all, if, if Toronto go, the alternative, the options are run with 11 or invite someone in to join. And I just don't see how Super League could decide who they would invite to join. Obviously, Lee. I mean, I mean, I don't know why Lee get. I don't know why just because Lee have got a bit of money. I don't know why they're an option because they weren't top of the league. They weren't in the grand final last year. But you could make the argument for Feverston because they got to the grand final last year. You could make the argument for London because they were in Super League last year. I would make an argument for Toulouse. Mm. I mean, they were top of the league. It's irrelevant that they were top of the league because they'd only played five games. But Toulouse, you could make an argument that as an expansion offering, you know, second French team, it's probably long overdue. Um, but then at the same time, if you're going to boot Toronto out, can you really go and ask another expansion team to do that? You know, it's very, it's all very confusing. Obviously, there's a meeting today where they're going to sort of half discuss it, but not decide, which is a typical rugby thing. But It's going to be very interesting to see what implications uh, are put on Toronto from Super League. And... Well, it's whether, obviously, they talk about sanctions, it's whether do... Do Toronto start next season on minus points? Do they, you know, do they have to relinquish well, funding next season? But then does that sort of defeat the exactly? Toronto are already facing an uphill battle, aren't they? Um, they've, they've not won a game in Super League this season. I know that I know they've played a lot of the the, the top table sides, if, if you will. Um, but if they start on minus points next season, they're yeah, already. Yeah, I mean, if points. you look at it, you play what is it? You get fourteen home games, don't you? Yeah. Toronto only get maybe 10, 11 because they're playing on the road. I, you know, if they got sanctions, you'd like to think that maybe they would do the fixtures so Toronto played all their games at home. Maybe you know, I, I, I don't. I think that's a massive issue for them. I don't think playing home games in England helps them massively. Um, but you know, the other the other flip side of it though is if you were Wakefield, say, or Salford, are you sitting there thinking? Well, we we would have rather just wrote off this season and not played. Now, the difference between Toronto and the English team and the UK teams or whatever is because they don't get the central funding. So Toronto aren't bothered about a night sky really because ultimately Toronto don't get any of that money. Now, for Wakefield, so just using them two as examples, obviously everyone else counts as well. They they've got this sky money. So ultimately, the re the the basic reason Super League resuming is to. Mi minimise the amount of money they have to give back to Sky. Now, if you wait for North Salford, and say, I mean, I don't know the figures, but let's just say 
playing the game is going to stop them having to give back 200 grand to Sky. You know, I don't know what it is. But they might have worked out that it's going to cost them more than that to play. Mm. So they might have thought, well, that's it. We'd have been better off right off the season. If we knew that we could right off the season and still be a Super League next year, then would they have done it? It'd be interesting. I mean, no one's ever going to come out and admit that that's what they wanted to do. But it'd been very interesting to know whether that thought process was in any Super League clubs' minds. Certainly. And uh, certainly at some of the, the lower budget clubs as well. And I, I can't see that they're wanting to, to resume the season at such a late stage behind closed doors as well. Um, well we we don't know the exact the, we don't know the exact figures. Obviously the five the don't. five the five grand five grand a week testing thing has been muted. So if you think over I don't know, twenty weeks. That's hundred grand just for testing. That's yeah. that's without bringing your players out of furlough to play. That's without the cost of getting to matches. You know, obviously they're obviously banking on in October being able to play in front of crowds and generate revenue that way. Yeah, we've got a couple of comments coming through, James. Louis Banks, hi Louis. It's good to good to hear from you again after so long. Oh, it was our first one back last week. Uh, it was a regular uh, with Mr. Banks. Uh, Toronto was an NFL project but, uh, before the form- formation of Super League and Robert Elston. It's clear Super League owners are not keen on Toronto, but I have a feeling Robert Elston's contract won't be renewed and the NFL uh, will take back over the running of the game. Uh, they should have been given three years grace like all other expansion teams have. Toronto are good for the game, in my opinion, and need to be given the three years grace from the to, to be fair, if you remember Catalan got exemption from relegation in their first few years in the comp when they came in in yeah. 2006. Now, slightly different because they didn't have to get promoted like Toronto did, so Toronto have effectively just been treated like anybody else. Um, someone told me that, or someone someone quite well connected in, in sort of Canada, told me that Robert Elston's very anti-Toronto. Um, so they actually think that, you know, the feeling against Toronto, maybe some of the clubs are pro. There's definitely a divide, I think, in Super League. There's some very pro Toronto teams, but the general feeling is maybe Robert Elston's quite anti Toronto. Uh, and I think he has come out before, I think he would prefer to lose to be in it. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, it, about the running of the game, is it maybe time that they, they give the devolved power and basically said to you know, a board or one or two people, right, you need to step, you know, the, the CEO or the head of the, the league should really be steering the direction of the league. He shouldn't be influenced by having 12 clubs basically dictate what happens to it. The 12 clubs that just happen to be in the league at this one time have all got the power to decide what happens moving forward. And ultimately, and you can't blame them for doing this, but ultimately all of the clubs that are in Super League are going to vote for their own self-interest. If you're, you know, Turkeys don't vote for Christmas, that, and that's the bottom line. Wakefield aren't going to vote for anything that sees them booted out of Super League yeah. or, or vote for the, anything that costs them a load of money or is going to lose them a load of money. They're just not going to do it. So is it time, is the only way forward for, for Super League and for Rugby League now is to basically have an independent board in charge that makes the decisions away from a club? You only have to look at how the championship thing, and we'll, we'll probably move on to this now, the, the championship season being cancelled. The way that's being handled, it got dragged out and dragged out because no one wants to make a decision. No one at the RFL wanted to make a decision or the board or whoever. The clubs are all chirping in. They've all got the wrong. Lee want to play on. Fenston want to play on. And they're the ones making the loud noises. When the reality is the majority of them clubs didn't want to play on. And it was as clear as day to me a month ago, six weeks ago, that there was just no way the championship season could resume. Because they can't play behind closed doors. Because at the moment... The furlough scheme is, is helping all of those clubs survive. Whereas as soon as you start playing, they've got to come off that, you've got to pay for testing, and you've got no income coming in. It was as clear as day to me that you just couldn't resume, and that was the right decision that they came to. My understanding was there was only four or five clubs that wanted to resume. Lee, Featherston, um, Bradford, that's in Newcastle, uh, were ones that were mentioned to me. I'm not sure Toulouse were involved, because Toulouse aren't an RFL member, no. so I don't think they're involved in the meetings, which again is another, you know, Another daft thing about the whole process. Uh, we've got another comment from Don Baker. She says, I'm interested to find out what's going to happen with the points that have already been gained by teams that have played Toronto uh, and who and those who know. I think that will be I, I think that may well be decided. There's a meeting today this afternoon, and I think that'll be one of the things that they discuss. I think they won't they won't make a decision just... on 
They won't make a decision on what happens to Toronto moving forward, but they'll make a decision on what happens to the players. I yeah. think what will happen is they'll just cancel the six Toronto games that have been and basically pretend they never happened. Yeah. Which, if you go on the side, I did a table, I think Publix Field would be the main beneficiaries. They go up to, to third in the table. Um, because the problem if you keep them and then just give walkovers is everyone will get a 24 nil win or whatever the walkover fee is. Now, Leeds beat Toronto by 54 points. So if getting into the top four comes down to points difference, it's going to be it's going to be unfair that Leeds yeah. got that and other teams didn't. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, but do you think they'll just the points will just be? In, yeah, I think they'll, I think they'll just delete Toronto, Toronto's record and, and as if it'll be as if Toronto were never in well, so the twenty twenty six league. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know whether he'll just sit out. I mean, they're on fifty five percent salary, which. <laughs> Obviously, if me and you took fifty five percent of our salary, it'd be hard. Well, it'd be hard, but fifty five percent of five million. You know what I mean? I, I seen. I think Bob Hunter said that he was going to Spain or something, wasn't he? With his with his wife and his kids, he could just tour Europe for the rest of the year, come back next well, year. But apparently, uh, Sonny Bill representatives have been down under, uh, and I think they were spotted for lunch with uh, the Sydney Roosters. Um, so could, could a return to the Roosters be on the cards? I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe I've, I've won final stint in the NRL. He's only going to get the, there for six, seven games this season, isn't he? Yeah, but the the, the Roosters, they're one of the favourites for the comp, so we could have add another trophy to his cabinet there. I mean, the other thing that's worth remembering about Sonny Bell, he wasn't ripping up any treats. He was, well, he made most <laughs> offloads. In Super League. League. Well, he made most offloads, but I mean... He wasn't. He was making mistakes. He yeah. was making mistakes. Well, you can't be a one man team. No, yes. but, on. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's obviously just come back to the rugby league, but he wasn't. He wasn't at the the level anywhere near the level he was when he last played for the Roosters. So I don't know. But a championship season cancelled. League one season cancelled. A bit of a win on League One. Wait, wait, no, Louis, Louis also said, have you guys heard that there is still quite a few players who have not agreed to pay terms uh, being imposed on them and that, that some players have been forced into a 50% pay cut? At, at Toronto? I don't know uh, really, if it means at Toronto or at I'm not at sure. Well, I, I mean, the clubs have all seemed to have... I mean, to be fair, this is probably this Toronto thing has probably helped all clubs because no one's been talking about the pay cut situation. Yeah. I think... The players have got to be realistic and got to understand they've got to keep playing otherwise. So Wakefield announced, I think it was Sunday or Monday. Um, there are three players that haven't agreed. Yeah. What does that mean? Does that mean the three players aren't going to be playing? Exactly, I don't know. What, what, what happens with that? Because I, I know, I've what? noticed quite a few clubs have, have said the majority of the squad has agreed to play a club. My understanding is, or, you know, and there may be, obviously, all contracts are different. My understanding is, is that if a club has said, has done a blanket pay cut, you know, and obviously they can use COVID as a reason because, you know, it's a genuine reason. If clubs have done a blanket pay cut and said to every member of staff, you've got to take 25% pay cut, and, the, and everyone's, you know, majority agree, the ones that haven't agreed, clubs can make redundant without paying them off. They'd only have to pay the notice in the con, the notice period in the contract, which may be four weeks, two months, whatever. So it'd be interesting to see whether we see that, um, you know, no. because, because because imagine if you were one of them, if you were a Wakefield player, <coughs> and you've agreed a 25% pay cut or whatever it is, I don't think it's that much, but but then you've got a bloke next to you who hasn't, you know, where does that, you know, where do you, where does that leave you in a, you know, in a team environment? Dawn also says, I read that New Zealand, War- New Zealand Warriors wanted Sonny Bill Williams, I think New Zealand Warriors have confirmed their interest, I think, in Sonny Bill, but um, I think, I think if Sonny Bill does return to the NRL, I think it will be with he's got, he's got have, Roosters. He's got to do it quick though, because he's got a he's got, 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 got a two week quarantine. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but that hey, that'll be pretty crushy if it, if he gets over to the Roosters and then you just get there for six or five, six or seven uh, finals matches, mm. get to get to a grand final, nice little, it's a nice little. Uh, well, little, it's not very nice for whoever's playing. NRL, back, uh, it's not, not very nice for whoever's playing back row for that at the moment. Um, oh, very true. Uh, Carl Muller says, how will the Challenge Cup work? 
Well, the details uh, were announced on the Challenge Cup. Well, so I, I think it's. I, I don't know why the Challenge Cup's going ahead this year, if, I, if I'm completely honest. So, the, cha- the situation with the Challenge Cup is the 16 teams left in it. One of them's Toronto, so obviously they won't be playing in it. Um, <laughs> there's five championship teams left in it, and they've all been given till the end of July to decide whether they want to be in it. Now, there's no way that a championship team can come out just to play a Challenge Cup game. Yeah. Bear in mind that. Even if you forget the logistics and the costs and the and the testing, let and we use Witness as an example just because I, I remember Witness have got Catalan. Oh, if Witness came out and played one game against Catalan, Catalan would have already been in training for more than a month. They'd have played three games already, and then Witness are expected to just come out, play Catalan, having not played a game for five months, and probably just get battered anyway. So what's the point? So I think what you're looking at is I think you're looking at. There's going to be four walkovers, um, so four Super League teams. I can't remember off the top of my head who it is. I think it's Castleford, Hull, Wakefield. Uh, I, I can't remember who the other one is. Oh, it'd be Catalan, obviously. The, the four, them four Super League teams will effectively get a bye into the quarterfinals. Now, where it gets really interesting is Toronto will then play Newcastle. So, in theory, Newcastle would get a bye to the quarterfinals. <laughs> And then they're basically, if they turn around and say they don't want to play, that means whoever draws Newcastle in the quarterfinals then gets a bye to the semi finals. Now, if you're one of them four Super League clubs that are getting a bye, so let's say Castleford, which I, can't, I think Castleford used to play York or something like that, or Sheffield, if Castleford get, through, Castleford get a bye to get through to the quarterfinals and then draw Newcastle, they get a bye into the semi Castleford would be in the semi finals of the Challenge Cup without having actually played a game. And, that, and, and I'm just using Catalan as an example. It could, the same could happen to Catalan, the same could happen to Wakefield, the same could happen to Hull. And it's like, you know... That, it's that's not good, though, is it? It's, there's, good, there's, there's surely <laughs> got to be an asterisk next to the Challenge Cup in 2020. I think, I think what they probably should do... I mean, because they, what they should have done is they, should, they, could have, they could have maybe redrawn it, I don't know. What, what they should do is the new... Let's say... It, what if I what I just said comes true? What they need to make sure is that only a team that has played a game can draw a Newcastle. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So if Warrington beat Wigan, say, or, or you know one of Warrington and Wigan, I can't remember the games, but Warrington and Wigan, for example, one there'd only be three teams that have got a chance of drawing Newcastle. Yeah. If you know what I mean. I mean, you know, what you could say is you're giving a team a second chance, but then... Yeah, that's what Dawn says. Maybe other people will come into the competition uh, because they're the team that, obviously, that's play Toronto, but, and, and obviously... Yeah, I mean, Toronto, But then, they, they, then again, they also lost that game, so yeah, why yeah. should they be brought back in? Well, OKR okay, played, didn't they? I so, just don't, it, it was your team, OKR. Okay, so OKR okay, beat Lee, didn't they? Um, mm. Who else finished near the bottom? Wakefield obviously must have beat someone to get through. Mm. Was Wakefield bottom four last year? No? I can't remember. Yeah, it was so long ago. But obviously there's only there's two teams that would... Would you bring Huddersfield? The problem is if you bring Huddersfield back, they get a bye to the quarterfinals. So then Huddersfield would be in the quarterfinals having lost. Exactly. You know. So I, just, I would have scrapped the, the competition. They need Wembley though, don't they? They're, they're banking on the final going ahead in October, well, maybe, whether it's at Wembley or wherever, they're banking on the final going in October to, to, to get money. Chris Abram says who will win the grand final in 2020. <laughs> well, it won't be Toronto. <laughs> no, I can't see it being Toronto. It's hard, because that, it's hard, because it, it's almost like a completely new season. Like, St. Helens haven't started particularly well. You know, they've won three, lost three. Wigan and Cass had started, I mean, to be fair, Wigan weren't great early doors, but sort of yeah. grew into it. Warrington, Warrington actually were getting heaps of praise after the first. They, remember, if they, they played Wigan with twelve men and yeah. did all right, then they beat Saint Helens nineteen 0 But then Steve Price was on the verge of getting the sack. Yeah, you know, see, so you, you, I mean, I mean, you can't look, look, you can't look at what's so happening. Yeah. Well, you, you can't. I, if you, if you I, tip, I, I think it's hard to call. I think it's hard to call because. But if you tip, <coughs> if you tipping anyone right now, I, I'm well, Saint Helens are the favourites with that bread. Saints are the favourites for Betfred, um, which has which has surprised a few people because obviously they did have troubles. I, you know, I think it's tough. I think it's hard one to call. I think it's very hard to look. Le- you know, look at Leeds. Yeah. Leeds really looked like they were building into something really nice. 
you know, they had that they had that game against Hull, the very first game where they got snotted. But after that, they were they were growing into the season. I think Castleford, I think go, I think Castleford don't get the probably the respect they deserve. They they go under the radar now. Yeah. And I think Darrell Powell will be sat there thinking, you know I, what, I was, was, was do it this year. Yeah, I was impressed with Danny Richardson as well in the first couple of games. And I, I thought he really stood up. I mean, he made a, made a good combination H- with Huddersfield, Truman in the halves. H- you know, you, people think I'm daft this, but Huddersfield had won four out of four away from home. They played, they played, um, they beat Saint Saint Helens away. Um, they, they won four out of four away from home and lost at home. But obviously they're not going to be playing at home now. So you know, if they churn, keep churning out away games, they'll be up there. Um, you know, whether they'll be a, whether they'll have the lasting power, who knows? Catalan. You know, you'd like to think Cat. The big thing for Catalan is, are they going to get home games? Because if Catalan start get, if Catalan play home games again, they might have a bit of a chance. But I think it, I think it's open for. You don't know how teams are going to handle it. How how are how are all them players coping with the pay cut? How are how are they all coping with the, it being a different environment? Yeah. How are they going to cope with playing so many games? You just don't know at the moment. No, we, 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 that's it for comments for now. Um, well, well, thank you for all your comments so far. We're going to, well, it was a World Cup draw this week. It was. We've got a nice poster that the World Cup people have the, the, sent the, us. The, the, the Toronto News broke on the eve of the, the big World Cup draw, so it took, so, it took the shine off it. Here's the poster, I'll open this here. Um, is, so, it, is this one in your bedroom? <laughs> it, it might do, yeah. Um, well, so we've got the men's, women's and wheelchair World Cups are all at the same time. It starts on 23rd of October, England versus Samoa in New at St James's Park. Uh, England are also playing at Bolton. I mean, let's get this right as well. It's ridiculous that it's at Bolton and not at Wigan. Let me just get yeah, that right here now. Why have you picked the University of Bolton Stadium, not the DW? That that's a nonsense decision for me. The interesting one for England though is against Greece. England Greece at Bramall Lane. I mean, the score that that game could be. I mean, I'm trying to find out actually the number of rugby league participants in Greece at the moment because there can't be many. And yeah. they're going to go up against England, which is going to be very tough. Um, that's Group A. Group- and, and there's, a, there's a Greek international in the NRL at the minute, Billy Magulius, who plays for the Cronulla Sharks. Um, group B is Australia, Fiji, Scotland, and Italy. Scotland, and Italy at Kingston Park in Newcastle. So if, here's one for you, Drew. If you fancy a night out on that first weekend, England Samoa is at St James's yeah. Park on the Saturday, and then on the Sunday you've got Scotland Italy at Kingston Park, so weekend Newcastle there. Um, probably the highlight of Group B is Australia against Scotland, which is being played at the Rico Arena in Coventry, mm-hmm. which will be a Friday night. That that'd be a good one. I think I'll go. Well, obviously I'll be trying to go to a lot of them, but that's certainly be one that's penciled in. Um, Group C: Jamaica, Ireland, New Zealand, Lebanon. Um, Jamaica's first game against Ireland at Leeds, It'd probably be a decent, decent crowd there. Um, that's like Group D, Tonga, PNG, Wales and Cook Islands. Now, the one we've highlighted from Group D is Tonga against Cook Islands, which is being played at the Riverside Stadium in Middlesbrough. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what the crowd's like for that one. It's, it's a huge ground, I can't remember the capacity. <laughs> it it's must be. 30-odd, though, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, for Tonga, Cook Islands, so no home nation there. I think that's a very, very bold move. Another interesting one uh, that we didn't mention in Group A is France versus Greece is being played at the Keep Up Stadium in Doncaster at half past two on Monday afternoon. Now, don't, that's not as daft as it sounds because it is actually half term that week, so they're hoping to get a load of kids and stuff yeah. down uh, for that game. Um, the quarterfinals then, I mean, let's have a bit of a run through of what we think the quarterfinals are going to be. Um, the first quarter final will be at the John Smith Stadium, which will be Australia probably against be going Papua New Guinea or Wales, maybe. They'll be the runner up of that group, Tonga to win that group, and then Wales or Papua New yeah. Guinea. Um, quarter final two at Anfield would be England's group. Um, England, oh no, not Jamaica. Oh no, hang on, I'm doing England's this all wrong. I'm doing this all wrong, I've got it all wrong. I've got it all wrong. Quarter final one, it'll be Australia against Group C, so that might be Jamaica. So it could be Australia. Could it not be Ireland? Yeah. Well, it could be Ireland, yeah. yeah so, it, so it probably will be Ireland. Is, is, what, are you even at, at Lebanon? <laughs> yeah. So what, you're going Australia, Ireland, and then quarter final two would be England against Papua New Guinea or Wales? Papua New Guinea, you'd probably say one, yeah. Or Cook Islands. Who would 
thing is with the Cook Islands, they can have a great squad on paper, but they just don't play enough international games. Mm -hmm. So what we're we'll going? We'll go England, Papua New Guinea, yeah, at Anfield. Then quarterfinal three of that Hull. That would be New Zealand against Scotland, Fiji. Beats Fiji. You'd probably say Fiji. Fiji. Yeah. Sorry, Scott. Sorry, Brave Arts. So New Zealand, Fiji at Hull. And then Bolton would be um, France or Samoa. Samoa. You, you against, against, Samoa. Tong, against Tonga. Sorry to, sorry to all the French listeners. Tonga, yeah. Fred Campbell, he'll be, all, he'll be on your back. Uh, the semi finals are at the Emirates Stadium and Ellen Road. And then the final is at Old Trafford on the 27th of November. Of course, the final is a double header because the women are playing on the same day at mm. Old Trafford. So let's have a look at the women's draw. Um, That'll be good exposure for the women's game. Actually. Some great teams in the women's draw. England, Brazil is your first game. Um, that's a double header headedly with Papua New Guinea against Canada. Um, what was the game I re England, Papua New Guinea is the game to watch in the women's group stage. That's at Headingley on Wednesday, 17th of November. All of the Group B games are at the new community stadium in York. Um, and then the semi finals are both at York as well. So if you like your women's rugby league, I would suggest relocating to York for a couple of weeks in November 2021. And then the wheelchair, I must admit, I've never seen a game of wheelchair rugby league, Drew. Um, I've not. I I'm looking go, forward I to it. Go to down. Yeah. The English Institute, Institute of Sport in Sheffield is a nice venue. The Copper Box Arena in London is even nicer. Um, so the Copper Box is going to hold Group A, which consists of England, Australia, Spain and Norway. And then... Group B is France, Wales, Scotland, USA. That's all going to be at EIS Sheffield. The semi final is going to be at EIS, Shef EIS Sheffield. The final is at the uh, MS Bank Arena in Liverpool. That's the Liverpool Echo Arena to me and you. Um, that's on Friday, 26th of November. So, some, some good dates, to be fair, some Friday nights. What I did like about this one, as we struggle to fold this up at normal. Um, oh, you're doing what I did yesterday, uh, James. What? You can't what? fold it right. It's a nightmare. Um, what I did like about this draw, compared to the um, 2017 draw, is there's midweek matches. Because when the World Cup was in Australia in 2017, we only had games at the weekend. Yeah. And it was like it felt like a very long slog between you know, Saturday and Sunday games. I'm going, so, to, I'm going to try to get to as many games as I can. Uh, well, I think I did... There was 28 games, I think, at the 2013 it's, World Cup, and I think I yeah. did 21. It's I mean, like, you can't actually, get to them yeah, all this, yeah. this time, which is a bit disappointing, especially the quarterfinals. You can't, we don't think it's possible to get to the to the to all the quarterfinals. Let me just double check why that's the case. Um, Uddersfield, 1930. I think it, you just can't get from Bolton to Hull, or whatever it is, in enough time. Yeah. So. But at least it gives rugby league something to look forward to. We've got, Tip, we've got a couple tickets. more comments. Sorry, uh, Woody says we're going to bid for the for stadium World Cup games before. Uh, that's why they didn't get the games. We've got to remember stadiums were chosen as part of a bid, bidding process, which included what else will happen on the day and around the town. Don also says uh, talking of the World Cup thoughts on Sean Wayne being linked with several NRL coaching jobs. Uh, given most didn't agree with Wayne Bennett being an England coach and an NRL coach at the same time. Uh, the thing is, is how can the England job be a full time job? They, they only play three, four games a year, so I don't think it's fair to stop Sean Wayne if he wants to coaching yeah. another team. If it was up to me, if it was me, I would just, I would almost have a selection panel for the England team and then just invite the coach to coach every year because I just don't see the point. I don't I, 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 I'm not a permanent <coughs> coach, but I also wouldn't stop. Because so I wouldn't stop a coach being another a, a club coach. They only play three or four games a year, so what's the point? I, I just think have a, you have a committee, a bit like the England cricket team back in the day, have a selection committee, so maybe have four or five people that are on the selection committee, they pick the squads, the training squad or whatever, and then at the end of the season, say to Darrell Powell or whoever, do you, want to, do you want to coach England for this series? Yes, I'm, I'll do it. Just do it that way, because... I, I, unless, I disagree. Unless Unless there's a massive revolution in the international game, how can you say to Sean Wade, no, don't go and get an NRL job or don't go and get a Super League job because ultimately, he's only, he, you know, that then means he's only coaching three or four games a year. The issue with Wayne Bennett wasn't, I don't think the issue with Wayne Bennett was that he was in, he had an NRL job. I think it was just his, his pure 
his lack of knowledge and his lack of understanding mm-hmm. of Super League. You can't tell me that if Sean Wayne got an NRL job, that he wouldn't be as he'd still be as switched on to Super League yeah. and English players as he is now. I'd like to see Sean Wayne have an NRL gig sometime soon. Uh, I think obviously there's a it's, there's a coach and merry go round in, in the NRL at the minute, isn't there? There's a couple of uh, guys who have lost the job. Paul Green, the latest at, at the North Queensland Cowboys. Dean Pay's left the Bulldogs. Um, the, I mean, there's a couple it, of vacancies at the moment. It'd be, it'd be interesting. Obviously, it would be interesting. Stephen Keane uh, left New Zealand Warriors a couple of weeks ago. So there are I can't even remember the last time there was an English coach no. in the NRL. Yeah. Um, you know, even if there has been, but I think. It'd be interesting to see how, how Wayne or A and other English coach would approach it. Would they sign? Would they try and sign English players? Mm. You know, would they try? You know, we're seeing this with Canberra at the moment where they're signing. They obviously signed uh, the lad Rushton from from Wigan. Would if an English coach went over there, would he try and find some untapped players over here? You know, it's like Super League Academy players that maybe haven't played and take them over there. Um, how would the Australian players respond to an English coach's methods? Um, you know, I, I have not. I have no idea what it's like in Australia. You know, I've never been there. Can't would Wayne would would Ashawn Wayne be able to go into the junior setup at, at North Queensland or whatever and have the same impact that he did at Wigan? You know, we don't know, but it, it'd be interesting to see. Um, I suppose if you if you thought about, I suppose it's good that Sean Wayne's getting linked over there because really, who else? What other English coach would really have a chance of of getting a gig over there? There's not really. No. I can't think of it. It's got to be Sean Wayne, hasn't it? I think. Yeah, I mean, obviously, not, I know Steve McNamara was there as assistant at Roosters, but never got, you know, he would never have got close to a top job over there. He's not done enough in Super League to get that. Is there any? There's not really any other English coaches, is there? I mean, you've got Daryl Powell. You know, he's done a great job at Castleford, but he's never won a major. You know, he's not won major trophies. Um, you know, other than that, there's not really much. There's not really much going on, is there? So, um, if we are to see a, an English coach in the RL, it, it's likely that this is probably the Sean Wayne's probably the only hope at the moment. Yeah, I agree. Um, we talked about the World Cup draw. A um, few bits and bats this week. Toulouse are keeping Mark Carella for next season. Um, Great player. Uh, now we we sit we well, let's go back to the Super League thing. Toulouse, I think, would probably be most disappointed about the the not being the, the season being cancelled because obviously they've moved to the to the big rugby union ground in Toulouse. They would have been hoping that this year would have been their year and they'd have been lined up in Super League next season. Um Catalan have this week got a TV deal on well, well, it's, it's not I've seen I've seen people getting excited about this on Twitter. It's not a TV deal really. A TV channel in France is gonna show the Sky Sports broadcast of Catalan games over it, yeah. which is completely different to what Catalan had last year, where um, being sports were filming their home games. But is it time now for us to say, right, if we're going to persist with this, let's get to losing? Yeah, I think I think so. I think Toulouse have got to be in and create that rivalry in France, create a French rivalry. Um, you could, because then there will be a TV deal. I'm not I'm not saying it, it will be being sports like it was last year, but. Take them for an example. They could have a, a Catalan's game every Saturday. Uh, yeah, not every game. Saturday, every other Saturday. Yeah, and then to lose a game every other Saturday. So it's just back to back. There's always a rugby league game on every Saturday night at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, whenever they show it. Mm. And you'd create that French rival between two teams. And I think a, lo- a lot of neutral fans, a lot of English fans, would watch the Toulouse Catalan's games. Well, cause don't forget, you would presume if if a, if a broadcaster came on board in France, Sky would take yeah. their feed. Like obviously they were showing all Catalan's games last last year. Um, because I'm slightly well, not slow. I mean, obviously it's nothing to do with me. But Catalan's recruitment over recent years, they're going very down the road of English players all of a sudden. I think is Gil yeah. Hudson going there next year, or I think I heard that one the other well, day. Well, he's Welsh, James. Well, yeah, but he's English, isn't he? Well, no. Oh, he's, he's, he's UK, he's British, he's what, that's what I mean. Now, can, you know, is that an issue, is it an issue, well it is an issue to me that they're recruiting English players, you know, with all due respect to Gil Dulce, why aren't France, mm. why aren't France being able to, to bring through players 
Yeah. Like, and, then, and they have done. Obviously, you know, Mikael Simon's retiring, or he's, he's going to play in the French Elite League at the end of the year. Um, and I had a really interesting conversation with, with um, someone from overseas about um, the way they look at developing players. Is It's a lot easier to get homegrown players in and, and no disrespect to players who play in this position, but it's a lot easier to get props, it's a lot easier to get back rollers, it's a lot easier to get wingers and maybe centres yeah. than it is to get half-backs or hookers or full-backs, because obviously they are the key, the key positions. So, do we think... But then, do we think Catalan need to be a bit more responsible with their recruitment, or is it a case of, well, it's not Catalan's responsibility to develop France Rugby League, Steve McNamara wants to yeah. put together a team to win the league, and he's entitled to sign who he wants. Yeah, it's it's a bit of both for me, really. I do think they should have the best French talent, and when you look at the best French talent, the best French player that comes to mind straight away is Leo Farge, isn't it? He should, if you want, yeah. He, sh- he should be playing for Catalan, shouldn't he? Um, you'd like to think, because he's, for me, he's the best French player. Um, Morgan Escaray, another fantastic French player. He should be play- yeah. Tony Ejo, yeah. another fantastic French player, was most recently playing for to- Toronto. Uh, Romain Navarrete, a French forward. Um, should- Pelissier. El Wai Pelissier, yeah. yeah. So you, you've got a lot of French talent in Super League, in the Championship, who aren't playing for the Catalan Dragons. Mike Torella, to be honest, because He's a French international. You're not French, are you? He's a French international. Let's not open this can of words. He's not French. He, yeah, he played for He's France. got the most Australian sound and French accent I've ever played, He played for France at the 2017 World Cup. He actually scored a really good try against yeah. Australia, yeah. wasn't he? Um, so. I, I, do, you, I, do, you, do you think if Toulouse were in the Super League as well, and there was a bit more of a. Would they, do you think they'd be a bit more protective over the French players then? So it's like, you know. So it, it, if if there's a say let's say Catalan have got a French player that and then they say and Guild or someone or whoever <coughs> to lose might then think oh well, we'll have him yeah and is there maybe a little well, then, you know yeah, it's a bit well, like the Escari Escari yeah, got po- booted out would to lose would, it out point power then wouldn't they well that's what I mean if Catalan if say if Toulouse were in Super League, would Catalan have got rid of Ascari and Guijo knowing that Toulouse may well have picked up Ascari and Guijo and then done very well there yeah you know what I mean that, I, I think that Toulouse would, would certainly have a lot of pulling power and, and they'd be able to attract the likes of Escaré who might not want to drop down into the championship so that's why they're willing to play. Well, is that solved? They're now three year deal. Yeah, um, but they'd, they'd be able to attract these, these kind of players. Mm. But they, they might be able to attract a, a Tony Guijo if, if they were in Super League because he might not want to drop down yeah. into the championship. Played for Juice with all the so he, in his career. He did, he did. He'd certainly, um, certainly have a lot of pulling power to lose. Um, but they, they recruited quite a few um, overseas players in recent times to lose. Well, I, mean, it's di- I mean, don't get me wrong, it's difficult because, you know, of course, you've got to put a team together that you think is going to compete. Mm. And, and obviously one of the struggles that the French teams do have is that, you know, and, and numerous people have said this to me, is that, I think even Steve McNamara might have said it to me. The French players do struggle to adapt to the the travelling back and two. Yeah. You know, to to try. I mean, I don't know how they do it now, Catalan. But obviously, coming back back and two to England every other week, some of the French players actually aren't up for that, um, and maybe that's why they don't want to stay or they don't want to. Um, they don't want to push themselves any further than they do. Um, don't don't say Escrow was let go to keep Gijo on the team. Uh, yeah. That worked out well. And then obviously Gijo has effectively had his nose pushed out of joint because Tomkins mm. um, Tomkins came. I I think it, it it's a it's a big shame that Gijo and Escaré aren't at Catalans. Mm. Um, but then at the same time, you know maybe maybe we're looking at it too. Maybe it's easy for us to look at it and say yeah. we should keep them because the French ultimately, if they but don't yeah, want and to play, ultimately, ultimately you don't you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. No, I mean yeah. I mean Catalan have had plenty of players that you know we saw them last year when we went to France. There's plenty of players that are playing in the French league that have played for Catalan and for whatever reason not made it. And 
you know, there might be a, a number of reasons why that's the case. But before we go then, Drew, what do you think is going to happen? Do we are we going to have with Toronto? Is it going to be? Are we just going to carry on this season and then next season, twenty twenty one, will effectively just be a reset back to twenty twenty? That yeah, that, that's that's what I think will happen. Uh, I think the season will go on without Toronto. I don't I don't think a championship club will come up into into the competition, uh, and I think Toronto will be allowed back in or to restart in Super League in twenty twenty one. When they can stage games in Canada, um, I think they, I think they've got to learn though uh, some lessons when it comes to recruiting. They've, they've got they've got to say massive. The big problem for me is that they 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 over recruited in the championship. They, yeah. spent, they, they, they overpaid in the championship, which meant that when they got promoted, they didn't have any wiggle room to. They needed to improve the squad, but they were full on the yeah. salary cap. They needed more bodies, but they were full on the salary cap. Another point that's been mentioned to me is that whether they should actually, um, because of this visa situation, is should they pre-season in France or somewhere like that? Mm -hmm. Because the, the visa issue comes up because they've spent the, they're only allowed to spend six months in the UK. Now, if they're over here January, February, March, you know that's eating up three months already. Whereas if they spend January in France on on a pre-season yeah. camp, then that's a month flexibility Possibly, that they've yeah. got. Uh, you know, the, do you think that they'll they, should they take TV money? I mean, I'd imagine the Super League clubs are going to be very reluctant to give it them now. It's, it's very tough because it, because the Super League clubs, when Toronto were first formed, they said they, they didn't want anything. Yeah. This this is what they said originally. They said we're, we're going to pay for everything. we we don't want any money from you. You keep the money. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't like we're going to bring. We're going to bring teams over to, to Canada to play. And the reality is, don't forget, the central funding value is probably only worth 20% of Sonny Bill's yeah. contract. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that, that's the reality. You know, people say about, oh, they've not had the central funding. Well, actually, central funding is only worth 20% yeah. of what you're paying Sonny Bill. Well, it's 40%, I suppose, if you do it on a one year mm -hmm. contract. But even still, that's less than half of one player is the equivalent to the TV funding. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Thanks everyone for, for joining us on the Rugby League Lunch Hour. We'll try and be back every Thursday during this uh, iffy period while we get back going. Um, thanks as always to Betfred. Please do leave your comments as well if you're watching this on demand. We'll try and get it up on YouTube this week because our guru can do that in the office. So, um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.